let's jump to the Todd McShay mock draft now and kind of review this. The way I want to do this is kind of how we do our mock drafts, read five picks at a time, comment on some of the notables, and we'll get in and ju- then jump to Daniel Jeremiah's mock draft. So for Todd McShay, he published this, I think, hmm, February 9th. Trevor Lawrence at one to Jags. Zach Wilson at two to the Jets. Have to respect it. Then the big one here, he has the Carolina Panthers trading up with the Miami Dolphins to go grab Trey Lance, not Justin Fields, to go grab to go grab Trey Lance at three, and then at four, Justin Fields to the Atlanta Falcons, and then the dream scenario, Panay Sewell of Oregon going to the Cincinnati Bengals. What's your opinion of Panthers going after Lance, not Fields, in a trade-up situation? They're, they're zigging. They, they're going complete opposite direction of Teddy Bridgewater is what they're doing there. That's Bridgewater, middling arm, underneath, game manager, Trey Lance, Monster arm over the top, although still some game manager traits to him. He doesn't take, he didn't make a lot of mistakes with the football over the course of his career. I think only five turnover the plays his entire college career. So has that aspect to him too. Uh, if that's where you're going to go, and, and you're stuck with Bridgewater this year, and you're the Carolina Panthers, you are. So he's going to say uh, Lance would probably take a year on the bench at that point. I, I, I'm not going to argue too hard against it. He has the physical tools that again are ridiculous are that lottery ticket can be worth a lot if you hit on it Kuiper is probably blown away that they didn't do that trade for mac jones you know i mean mac jones is still on the board might as well go up and grab him no i'm just kidding <laughs> well, for Devontae smith because he's or Devontae, I mean, Devontae player, smith's so. still on the board guys yeah. Devontae smith is still on the board and you're trading up for trey lance Ten spots what, ahead 16th of trey best player on mel yeah. kuiper's board what are you doing what are you doing? Best player available. But uh, I do think that the Panthers would be smart to trade up and go grab a quarterback, whether that's Lance or Fields. I think the Eagles, as I've seen in my mock draft, would be smart to go up and try and grab a quarterback. Like go, like these teams that are going to be, you know, say if Miami doesn't want a quarterback, that number three pick, if they're like, yeah, we're probably going to take Sewell or Devontae Smith, trading back to six or eight or say nine with the Denver Broncos, 12 with the San Francisco 49ers, there has to be people looking to come up and go grab a quarterback. I think Carolina, I've seen rumors looking to get aggressive at upgrading the quarterback position. I think other teams will do that as well. I think there's a likely scenario where that number three pick is ultimately traded away and a team yeah. comes up and go grabs. I do like I do like the QBs one, two, three, four. I think that's a realistic scenario with how how good those guys are and then just how different they are from QB five. I, I feel really good about QB one, two, three. Yeah. And especially if Miami trades out or like only if Miami trades out. But I'm kind of banking on that. I could see the Atlanta Falcons after being mocked a quarterback a ton get out of it, and then ultimately grab like a receiver or something at four, or say Panay Sewell at four, and say, hey, we're, we're building around Matt Ryan. All this smoke about the quarterback position, we're not doing it, something like that. Because the problem is, is Matt Ryan's contract's very difficult to get out of, and he still has multiple years left. Like, it'd be very difficult to bring in. Matt Ryan's still good. And Matt Ryan's still you're, good. You're, you, your upshot of Justin Fields, a good case scenario is for him to be as good as Matt Ryan. You know, that that's like... That would be hitting on that pick is to get another Matt Ryan. So he's only 35. You could win a Super Bowl with Matt Ryan if your defense doesn't give up, you know, 28 points on the stretch unanswered. Yeah. Number six, he has the Philadelphia Eagles taking Jamar Chase. A little run on receivers here. Lions grab Devontae Smith of Alabama. Lions fans want a receiver. They know Kenny Galladay could leave. They know they might tag him, but also Marvin Jones, Sammy Andola. Danny Amendola, a lot of free agent wide receivers. The Detroit Lions fans, from what I've seen on Twitter, really want a receiver here. They get Devontae Smith and Todd McShay's mock draft. The Dolphins, after trading back with the Carolina Panthers, grab Jalen Waddle, pair him back up with Tua Tungabailoa. At 9, Patrick Sertan goes to the Denver Broncos. And at 10, Caleb Farley goes to the Dallas Cowboys. That we consistently see. Yeah, Farley and chalky. Sertan going 9 and 10 has is, is been chalky of late. Um, but let's talk about... The, I mean, there's not a lot of notables here. Like, yeah, if the quarterbacks are off the board, I think you could see this run on wide receivers uh, at, from that six to ten range. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's pretty much what we've seen across a lot of mocks at this point. This is making a lot of fans happy. You know, they want to see consistency. Yeah, exactly. They don't want to see, you know, they don't want to see anything bold. Here, they don't want to see the worst mock ever. They don't want to see the worst mock ever. So let's jump to eleven. Eleven, kind of, so. 11, the New York Giants end up grabbing Kyle Pitts of Florida. I could see him stepping in ahead of, say, a Waddle or Smith or Chase even for a team that really wants to get aggressive at winning over the middle of the field and bringing in a potential top five tight end in the NFL. But if he does fall to 11, Evan Ingram should not keep you from bringing in Kyle Pitts, Giants fans. And you do not need to force the fourth best receiver on the board in this situation. Like if Chase, Waddle, and Smith are gone... Go grabbing Kyle Pitts is not a consolation prize. It is a freaking first place prize. That is awesome 
for your offense. I think and Daniel Jones. That's the thing about Kyle Pitts and his skill set. It's not redundant to anyone in the NFL, besides maybe Travis Kelsey or Darren Waller. Like it's not a redundant. Even those teams would take care. <laughs> exactly. Like even those teams though would want. It's not a redundant skill set. Like those guys can share a field. Him and Evan Ingram. You don't. You're not just saying, oh, we run only one tight end on the field at a time. Sorry, Ingram, you can't play now. Sorry, Pitts, you can't play now. No, Pitts could just go play wide receiver for this down. That's fine. He's very good at that, too. Like That's that's the beauty of having a guy like that, is that you're f- wholly flexible in terms of what you can do, that it's not just saying, oh, we have a, we have a tight end. No, thank you, generational talent. This one's wild to me. Number 12, Chicago Bears. They trade, trade up. up. They trade up San Francisco and grab Mac Jones of Alabama. At 13, Rashawn Slater goes to the Los Angeles Chargers. At 14, Elijah Vera Tucker goes to the Vikings. And at 15, which I think we've seen a ton, Micah Parsons of Penn State falls to the England Patriots. Let's talk about the Bears trading up from, what, 20 to 12 to go grab Mac Jones. Bears quarterback situation, we're going to have to dive into like free agency. I think next week we should yeah, probably start it. to go through what we think teams should do probably do like a preview of each conference but the bears are the one team that i don't think they're going to be in the quarterback in the draft i don't think so because ryan pace's job is on the line he has to win this year you can't you can't restart with mac jones and hope that he hits the ground running as a rookie quarterback and takes you to the playoffs because if he doesn't you're gone if, if it doesn't happen this year they're gone so they are going to be firmly in the veteran quarterback market who can take us there right now they might, they might sell draft capital to do it, but it's not going to be sell draft capital to move up and get Mac Jones or Trey Lance, I don't, I don't think, because that guy's not getting you to the playoffs. And then once you don't get the playoffs, boom, you're gone. That's the sad reality of kind of giving that guy who's tilting on the edge of his job, the hot seat GM, mm-hmm. of giving him that one more year, kind of like Bob Quinn in Detroit last year, where you don't maybe make the best sound long-term decisions because you're mortgaging for your job right now. Yeah. And that's not a great position to be in as an organization, sadly. Unfortunate for the Bears. I don't think this happens, and I don't think Bears fans would even like it either. Like yeah. They'd rather, I think, even see Carson Wentz. I don't know. Maybe not. But it's, it's hard <laughs> to say. Don't go that far. That's maybe maybe not Let's Carson Wentz, but I do think they'd rather see you know getting aggressive like with the Jimmy Garoppolo, a Derek Carr, yeah. even picking up Cam Newton at this point, like trying to find a guy that could come in. Dude, I think Newton's getting slept on. I think he, like, he was all right. And that receiving core in like New at least England made Tom Foles. Brady. At least better than Nick Foles. That receiving core in, and offense in, in New England yeah. made Tom Brady, the Hall, the future Hall of Fame, now Super Bowl reigning Super Bowl champion, look terrible. Yeah. Like Cam Newton was going to look bad in that offense with how bad that roster is. So maybe people are sleeping on Cam Newton. Not a lot of other notables here in that 15 range. I think Slater, the Chargers, is something I see a lot of. And with the Minnesota Vikings, if those three best receivers are off the board, like I think I could, you could see them go offensive line here with like Elijah Vera Tucker. Jumping to 16, Carolina Panthers grab Gregor Rousseau of Miami, Florida. Raiders grab Jeremiah Wusu Kormoa of Notre Dame at 18. My guy, Jalen Phillips of Miami, goes to the Miami Dolphins at 19. Washington football team grabs Kadarius Toney. And at 20, after trading back with the Chicago Bears, San Francisco 49ers grab safety Trayvon Morig. I think in that range, you've seen a ton of Gregor Rousseau to the Cardinals, the linebacker addressing for this, the Raiders at 17. What I think is interesting is the football team going after Tony and the, the Niners grabbing our favorite safety in the class at 20. Yeah, because the Niners, no one would mock him at safety at 12. Yeah. No one would be like, oh, yeah, go more like then. But once you trade back, I think that becomes a far more realistic option. That defense is, I mean, why they, a big reason why they got to the, Super Bowl a couple years ago. So I think adding to that couldn't hurt. The Tony pick at 19, that's high, man. That's just – and he's a nice complimentary. Like you're not getting him in there to ask him to be your number one guy in Washington. You got that guy. You got Terry McLaurin. But at 19, I would just like – I would like a more of a sure thing as a number two wide receiver if I already have a Terry McLaurin is all I'll say. That – being more like an Elijah Moore would be. But I like adding to the offense. I like trying to attack the offense side of the ball because whoever starts at quarterback for the football team is going to need an elite supporting cast to take them into the postseason again next season. At um, 21, he has the Indianapolis Colts grabbing Quiddy Pay of Michigan, Titans grabbing Aziz Ojulari of Georgia, Jets grabbing running back Travis Etienne of Clemson ahead of Najee Harris, which is interesting. Because a lot of the ESPN guys, a lot of, you know, draft. 
draft analyst like Najee Harris is the number one back in this class. So having ETN even, obviously, we're not mocking him in any first rounds anytime soon, but having him go ahead of Harris is interesting. And at 24, Christian Derrissaw, which I think it would be a steal for the Steelers at 24. They grabbed Christian Derrissaw, the offensive tackle of Virginia Tech. And then at 25, Levi Amuzurike of Washington going to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Do you think after the Senior Bowl, Levi and Wuzurike will be viewed as a first-rounder by teams? Do you think he sneaks in the back end of the first round? No. I just... You, the only th- thing that could get him there is the fact that just, like, teams need defensive tackle. Mm-hmm. I desperately need defensive tackle. He's the next one. Because he's not, in my opinion, his tape's not first round at this point. He's first round caliber athlete, his tape does not match that. The one pick I want to go back to there, though, the Jets going running back. And you're going to hear probably a thousand times about the Jets and running back, quarterback, young quarterback's best friend. You got Zach Wilson there too. Give him, give him his best friend. Strong running games, quarterback's best friend. It is no secret that the people probably saying that, the quarterback saying that on TV, were not good quarterbacks in the NFL. You know who I'm talking about when I'm saying the quarterback, the quarterback pundits. They needed the run. They needed a strong running game. They needed those guys because that's how they move the ball offensively. When you are actually a good elite quarterback, what you need is an offensive line. You don't need a strong running game. A strong offensive line will give you a strong running game. A strong offensive line will also have the benefit of giving you strong pass protection and ability to throw the football down the football field. So if they went running back with that second first round pick, I would, I would be so upset as a Jets fan because it's not going to, one, give you a strong running game, or two, be your quarterback's best friend. Quarterback's best friend will be a nice offensive line and some weapons for him. Multiple Downfield. best friends. Multiple best friends. And yeah. the offensive line, there was that'd kind be, of a that'd, run that'd there. That would be like a guy you text sometimes on the weekends if you're really bored. That's that's the running back. I mean, I would have rather them picked Derisaw, who falls to the Steelers, who I feel like would be an awesome get for the Steelers at 24. I'd rather them pick Derisaw than ETN and bring oh, yeah. him at tackle. Easily. I don't, I don't, I don't get why you wouldn't Tackles invest in the trenches like that. Uh, let's read the last few picks here and then jump to DJ's mock. Zayvon Collins, the linebacker for Tulsa, goes to Cleveland at 26. Linebackers getting mocked Cleveland like it's their job. At 27, one of my favorite picks in this one is if he does fall here. J.C. Horn, cornerback, South Carolina, the Baltimore Ravens. I think that's an awesome, an awesome play for the Baltimore mm-hmm. Ravens. Jalen Mayfield, Jaylen offensive tackle, Michigan, uh, going to the Saints at 28. Aaron Robinson, the UCF slot quarter, going to the Green Bay Packers at 29. At 30, finally, Najee Harris, running back of Alabama, comes off the board to the Buffalo Bills. And then at 31, it's Joe Tryon, defensive end of Washington to the Kansas City Chiefs. And then, Levon Wuzurike was not only picked in the first round, he was picked to this guy, Christian Barmore, goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 32. Ooh, that'd be a great pick for the Buccaneers at 32 if he falls there. Because uh, I bet Sue probably retires and they're going to have some holes. Now, they're, they're not going to be able to retain everyone. That just seems unrealistic with their cap situation. The picker I don't really get is Mayfield to the Saints. They got like two a first rounder at right guard, second rounder from two years ago at center, a guy getting paid like ten plus million dollars a year at left guard. Are you are they now they may trade Ryan Ramchick, they may move away from him, but like is Mayfield gonna start a tackle? I feel like everyone's pretty much saying he's guard at this point. I I can't get on board with that. That's just that would be a wild one. Saints, I've said before. It's going to be a bad offseason, but valuable positions is the point of this draft. Cornerstones that you can start building around. I don't think a fourth interior alignment is a cornerstone. I mean, we also um, love the idea of, I don't know, I lost my train of thought there. Yeah, I can tell. But I do think that getting investing in the offensive line is important, but at a certain point you have to have a path to the field, right? Like if they're, yes. if they're not trading, right? it's the same thing you said about yeah. Cesar Ruiz last well, it's year. It's like there's tackles available there. You know, like there's. Plus, Mickey Lewis is trading up anyway. You know, Mickey. You know, Mickey. Yeah. Mickey's coming up. He's They'll coming be in the quarterback class. Time. They yeah. might end up with Trey Lance. I like That's it. Good. I like it. Uh, the other pick, and I don't think we've talked about him a ton, but it's Joe Tryon. Like, I think he gets consistently mocked in the back end of first rounds, yeah. but is not considered a top thirty-two, top forty prospect on PFF's board. Yeah. What are your concerns with Tryon? I was gonna say Mayfield, Tryon, or a few guys that we're just gonna be lower on. He wasn't productive. He, he's. I think he had a 70 something pass rushing grade his last year at Washington. Um, long, pretty explosive, but he just doesn't really have pass rushing moves. And even like his bull rush is not that effective for like his skill set being long and explosive. Should translate at least to good bull, to bull rushing college offensive tackles consistently. He did not do that. Shall we jump into Daniel Jeremiah's mock Let's draft now? Let's do it. It's just big board mock draft season. And the yeah. next week, I'm excited to talk. And then we'll no, go. Yeah. Tomorrow we have the mailbag. 
Next week, we're going to talk some free agency. After the, And I got a ton of interviews lined up today. It's Trey Morick and Demetrius Felton. But we've got a lot of cool ones lined up for tomorrow and next week as well. Uh, for Daniel Jeremiah, back at it. Jacksonville Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence at one. New York Jets, Zach Wilson at two. The Dolphins stay put at three and grab wide receiver Jamar Chase, not Devontae Smith. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Uh, wide receiver Jamar Chase of LSU going to the Dolphins at three. The Falcons take a quarterback in Justin Fields. And at five, Panay Sewell graciously falls into the laps of producer Mike Quinn and Cincinnati Bengals fans lap. Um, I think I'm gonna yeah. I think I'm just gonna keep mocking Sewell to the Bengals just to just to give them fuel hope. the fire. They need they need the hope. You know, I don't actually think it's gonna happen. I think he comes off the board before that. Really? I do. So you don't see quarterback one through four? I don't see quarterback one through four. All right, here's a crazy scenario that's kind of topical. Uh so you just said that the Saints are gonna try to trade up. Ryan Ramchek for five, straight up. Hmm. That's interesting. Because they're trying. They, there's rumors you that do they're trying to trade. Why wouldn't you do I it? Wouldn't hate it. You got to pay Ramchick immediately. Wow. Good, Cro- cross that bridge when you get to it. Yeah. I would. If I had like where? What's the highest pick? I would go Ryan Ramchick. Probably twenties, right? No, probably more like fourteen. In this draft, fourteen, fifteen. I'd go for Ryan Ramchick. Maybe they trade back, grab some receiving talent, and then you trade, trade back one and then of- trade that for Ramchick. Oh man. Now the, I. I feel like you'd never get player trades the day of the draft. That's just rare. Yeah. It has happened, but it is rare. So. Randy Moss was traded yeah, day, Randy of draft. Moss day of draft. Um, but that would be, that would fix, that would fix your tackle problems. That would be pretty sick, dude. I kind of yeah, like Everybody that wants Sewell because he's like this supposedly like can't miss all pro tackle. Like, why don't you just get, get an all pro tackle? Plus, I've seen some reports you know? that they don't really want to move Jonah Williams back and forth from left and right and all this stuff. And if you bring in Ramchek, keep him at right and keep Jonah Williams at left. I mean, there's some of that consistency as well. Maybe they are looking at some right tackles on the trade market. I like it. I like this conversation. Anyway, the, the notable here, I think, is the Miami Dolphins staying put at three and drafting Jamar Chase, yeah. who we see as the best receiver in this class. We would obviously vote for a trade down. But if the Dolphins are stuck into picking at three and they're not going to pick a quarterback, this is one of my favorite picks for them at three. I think it's one of the better scenarios if they aren't trading out or taking a QB. Yes. Uh, I, I still would go Sewell personally. But I don't think you can go wrong. Like there's some there's some blue chip talent in this class that you feel really strongly about. That guy's one of them. Number six, he has the Philadelphia Eagles taking Kyle Pitts, tight end out of Florida at seven. Micah Parsons, the Detroit Lions. Everyone loves that mock. I had that in my mock draft. Uh, Carolina Panthers take Trey Lance at eight. If he falls to them at eight, and we don't see quarterbacks go higher. That, I think, is a dream scenario for the Carolina Panthers. Literally a dream scenario. If you don't have to trade multiple picks to go up and get him, but feel confident you can get him at eight, I do think that's that's what the Carolina Panthers want. I don't know if they'll get it, but I think that is a dream scenario for them. At nine, Caleb Farley, and at 10, Pat Sertan. You're going to see 9-10 mock those two corners a ton this offseason. No surprises there. Let's talk more about the, the Trey Lance thing. So we we already seen this mocked in Tom McShay's, but they had to trade up to three to go get him. Staying put at eight and getting Trey Lance, is that not the best case scenario for Carolina? Yes, I think it would. I mean, best case scenario for any of those teams that need a quarterback is not having to move, but still getting your quarterback. Yeah, like if so, Trey Lance yeah. is on the board for Denver at nine, yeah. like that's a dream that's scenario. Like dream you have scenario. to make that decision. Yeah, I do think ultimately when you think a guy is the guy, when you're that confident in him, you don't leave it up to chance because one third rounder, whatever it's going to take to move up a few spots, probably a little bit more than that. Not inconsequential to what that guy can bring to the table. The the interesting pick here to me is the Cal Pitts to the Eagles. I don't know what the Eagles fans want. I feel like anytime you mock anything, they get upset. Besides maybe Devontae Smith. That's the only guy it seems like that they'll be happy with. But Cal Pitts, again, not redundant to an Eagles team that will have Dallas Goddard, probably won't have Zach Ertz. I imagine he's cap casualty. Not redundant. They run a lot of two tight ends anyway, but I think the most two tight ends of any team in the NFL already. Yeah. They would they would jump at that possibility to pair him. Vastly different skill sets. Again, not redundant. No, I, I don't think Eagles fans are even upset with that pick. Okay, maybe good. some are. Maybe some right. are. But I Should do think at, having Kyle pick. Pitts and Dallas Goddard and then obviously maybe trading away or Cap Cowsley for Zach Ertz is the move if you know Jamar Chase is already off the board. I'd rather have Kyle Pitts at six than Devontae Smith at six. Who? I would. I'd rather have Kyle Pitts at six than Devontae Smith at Your six. Your positional scarcity argument fat strongly comes into play with Kyle Pitts in this class. Yes. You won't find another. Not even close. I don't if think you you'll find another specific. next year. Like yeah. You're not going to find Kyle Pitts next year. Yeah. I, I, I do think taking him at six over Devontae Smith, as DJ has mocked here, maybe isn't like 
what everyone wants, but I, I definitely agree that I would take him over um, you don't, Devontae I don't think Smith. Charlie Kohler is the next Kyle Pitts. I don't think Charlie Kohler, the Iowa State tight end, is the next Kyle Pitts. Uh, New York Giants at 11. They grab Gregory Rousseau, not a receiver. Our Giants fans are probably furious. Giants fans, every time you mock them not a receiver right now, they are getting pissed. So they grab Gregory Rousseau of It's like the anti-2020. What anytime you did mock him receiver, they got yes, this. yeah, anti twenty twenty at twelve. The San Francisco 49ers grab Rashawn Slater. Trent Williams likely to leave in free agency, so I like that pick. And then at thirteen, Jalen Waddle, wide receiver of Alabama, goes to Los Angeles Chargers, not Devontae Smith. And then at fourteen, finally Devontae Smith comes off the board to the Minnesota Vikings. Oof. And then the Patriots, I love this pick, J.C. Horn at fifteen. Fit. That is a fit and a half. A fit and a half. He'd fit in. DJ sure. has the receivers mocked in the same order as PFF has receivers ranked. And I don't think anyone should be all that stuck. I don't think anyone should. But either, even if you don't agree, even if you don't agree with PFF's ranking, I think when we first had that come out and everyone saw that Devontae Smith wasn't our number one receiver or our number two, I mean, we were getting death threats. And now I think it's going to be more normalized that like, hey, you could re- you could view this receiving class this way. You could. It's, there's a chance that you could. And Daniel Jeremiah said in his entire time in the front office, he had to tweet about it because he probably got so many death threats too. Yeah. No one's ever brought up postseason awards that guys won. And that was a Devontae Smith tweet. That was, that was, he didn't say Devontae Smith, but it was the Devontae Smith. Because there were probably so many fans yeah. saying, why, to, you know, first Heisman winner since Desmond Howard. And like all of that is impressive. I agree. But I, you have to look it's at like, him as a prospect. Yeah. Des had a great receiving career too in the NFL. It's Easy. Like, Good return, man. He's a Super Bowl MVP. Um, Packers legend. But the one pick here that I still like, Devontae Smith, where his fit goes, the Vikings, it was kind of one of those fits in the mock where, like, shit, I haven't drafted this guy yet. I got to throw him in somewhere. Yeah. Because I don't think that's a good fit. Like, that one, they, they run fewer three wide than any team in the NFL. Now, some of that's because old BC Johnson would be your third wide. Yeah. Like, some of it's that is just scheming two talent, but they don't want, like, they want to be a two back or a two tight end. They want, to run two wide receivers, and that is their offense. So adding a third guy, again, pass to the field, I don't see Devontae Smith, even if they did add him, would be playing 50% of the snaps there. So. I'd be floored if the New York Giants pass on Smith or Waddle at yeah. 11 for Greg Rousseau. And I also think something that doesn't get talked about enough here, Gettleman. adding speed for the Chargers, adding Jalen Waddle with Keenan Allen with that offense, and Justin Herbert, like that, I really do like trying to build around Justin Herbert in a hurry is sick. Like, don't like because I've seen, I think the most common position mock to the Chargers at 13 is offensive tackle, but I haven't seen receiver a ton. And I also, I really do like it if Waddle or Smith are on the board at 13 for the Chargers, going and grab a guy like that would be pretty sweet because I think you have to, you have to build around Justin Herbert. And I know the offensive line needs help, but I kind of like Jalen Guyton though. I mean, he runs like a 4 3. He's kind of already got that. He's not Jalen Waddle, okay. but Guyton's all right. Easy. I'm just saying. I, doesn't he have like the lowest yards per run of any receiver in the NFL last year? Did he? I think so. Oh, no. I'm thinking of a different Chargers receiver. But still, I do think that you can get an upgrade over Guyton. Uh, call me bold. Call me crazy. Four, I think you can get an upgrade three. over Guyton. Uh, at 16, he has the Cardinals grabbing Elijah Vera Tucker of USC, the off the tackle, likely guard in the NFL. At 17, Quiddy Pay to the Las Vegas Raiders. I think edge rusher to the Raiders should be commonly mocked in this class. With Who are you taking off the field? Burrell or Crosby? Which one goes? Any of them. <laughs> Either or. Uh, but you have Quiddy Pay. I, I mocked them Jason Owe in my mock draft. I think you could see – Greg Rousseau, I think you could see them go after a pass rusher, largely because Gus, Gus Bradley, the new defensive coordinator, does not blitz. He needs yeah. a pass rush that can win with four. four base, yeah. And if you don't – right now they don't. They don't have a pass rush that can win with six. Like they need help there. And I think adding a Quiddy Pay or an Owe could make sense. At 18, this one – I hope we don't see for Miami Dolphins fans' sake, but Najee Harris running back going at 18 to the Miami Dolphins at 19. Washington football team lucks into Christian Derisaw at 19. I don't think he'll last that far. And then at 20, Chicago Bears wide receiver Kadarius Tony. I can't get on board with the Miami Dolphins pick, but we can't just spend the entire podcast talking about running backs in the first round. I just I think it uh, if they were to go running back in the first round, it would feel very much like after obviously going their other need wide receiver. Or their biggest need. It would feel a ton like the Jaguars going Leonard Fournette when they went Leonard Fournette number four overall, whatever, which where that was a complete roster. They had filled all their needs in free agency except running back. The Dolphins have done a very good job of building out that roster via draft free agency the past couple of years and probably may even do some more adding this offseason. And it will feel very much like we have no other need but running back. Take top running back. When that's not how I would 
top. No. It kind of reminds me also when, remember when the Raiders took Jamarcus Russell and then the following draft, I think, took either Darren McFadden or Darius Hayward Bay and then the following draft, one of those two guys. Like, they, they, Hayward they, Bay was next. They like, no, went, sorry. They went Russell, McFadden. Hayward Bay, McFadden. No, it was McFadden then. Hayward but I feel like they were just like, okay, we got the quarterback, let's get the running back. We got the running back, let's get the receiver. And at that point, it's like, okay, you're overdrafting from positional need. That same class had Michael Crabtree and fast, Jerry though. Macklin, and they went for Hayward Bay. McFadden, probably not the greatest pick uh, with his injury history and the value of the position. But still. Skinny legs. Skinny legs. The other pick I wanted to highlight in here in this kind of set was um, the Chicago Bears going after Kadarius Toney. Adding a, a freak athlete like that, a guy that can do it after the catch, is something that I don't think they currently have. And yeah. like they might lose, lose Allen Robinson in free agency or likely will. I don't think Anthony Miller, I think Anthony Miller might have played his last game in Chicago. Oh, um, do you? Yeah. I mean, that's what I've heard. There's some people saying that Anthony Miller might be Trade on his it. way out. Cut? He's not I don't bad. Know. I don't know. I don't know. That's either. what I've heard. I didn't hear it. I'm not hearing this. But I again they they do the Bears have a number of different offensive needs, I will say. So wide receiver uh, if if they don't resign Allen Robinson, yes, like I get on board. Don't complain. I would not complain about that whatsoever. Indianapolis Colts at twenty one in DJ's mock take Greg Newsom of Northwestern, the corner at ta- Tennessee Titans take Jalen Phillips at twenty two, the edge defender from Miami. Then Ronnie Perkins of Oklahoma goes to the Jets at twenty three. Jalen May- Mayfield, the uh, offensive tackle from Michigan to the Pittsburgh Steelers at twenty four, and then Jeremiah Owusu Kormoa to the Jags at twenty five. Two names that I don't think we see consistently mocked in the first round here. Yeah. 21, Indianapolis Colts grab Greg Newsom, And then at 23, the Jets grab Ronnie Perkins. Your opinion on those two prospects? Colts and Newsom is a... They're a team that's going to be high on Newsom. That's what the they arms. like. Yeah. They like the length. They like the athletes. They've said that. That's how they scout. Now, they haven't had the best luck in terms of drafting cornerbacks. Like, oh gosh, who's the guy's Rocky Scene? Rocky Scene has not been great for them. They've been much, much better in evaluating those guys in free agency, like adding when they added Kenny Moore, when they added Xavier Rhodes this past year. But the draft, that sort of blueprint for how they draft has not been the best. But they're a team that would cover a guy like Newsom that highly. Then the Ronnie Perkins one I love. That guy, the more I watch him, he's, just, he's, he's got that burst and can play low. And he... When you can bull rush at under 250 pounds, I think you can do that. That's that's the guy I want. He's also like a high motor guy. Like yeah. he's like effort. He's got effort, explosiveness, physicality, athleticism, all this stuff. And also, I want to look more into his background because he was what suspended for the first part of the season for yeah, something. I think it was a drug test. Something. I think there's some opportunity to look into his background, look into his off field. But on the field, what you see is a guy that shoots out of the cannon at the snap. And I think anytime you see. Those explosive pass rushers, man. It, it, it gets you excited. I start to get I'm interested. Excited. All that stuff starts to come down. All right, last few picks here. Joe Tryon, again, mocked at the back end of the first round. This time he goes to the Cleveland Browns at 26. Trayvon Morig, safety, going to the Baltimore Ravens at 27. Saints grab Mac Jones at 28. That would be quite the scenario for the Saints. I don't know if Mac Jones lasts that far. He lasts that mock. far in my mock, too. Yeah, but I do think Mac Jones at 28 would be a fantastic situation for the New Orleans Saints. And Mac Jones. like That would be a good situation for Mac Jones. I, that's an ideal situation for Mac Jones. At 29, Tevin Jenkins of Oklahoma State goes to the Green Bay Packers. At 30, Aziz Ojulari to the Buffalo Bills. At 31, Landon Dickerson, even after the ACL tear, goes to the Kansas City Chiefs to go play, safe, uh, go play center. And then Nick Bolton, linebacker, goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, likely to replace Levante David if he do, they do lose him. I would like that because he's an NFL-ready guy. He can come in and I feel like year one, you're not going to be Levante David, but year one, he's not going to be a liability, whereas other linebackers in this class can't necessarily say that about. The one pick I want to highlight here that I would just cry, obviously, Green Bay Packers, if they pick Tevin Jenkins, offensive tackle. It's just Elkton Jenkins is their tackle of the future. Get on board with it, everybody. He's incredible. He's a what was he, an all-pro guard this year? Was he? He was great this year at guard, whatever he was. <laughs> all-pro guard, in my eyes, can be an all-pro tackle. He is that talented of an offensive lineman. If they're drafting offensive line, make it mid-rounds, make it interior line, which they did a ton of. They just like drafted three guys in the late rounds last year in the interior. Other positions prioritize Green Bay. Rashad Bateman still on the board in this situation. Right? Rashad positions. Bateman there at 29 could be the move for Green Bay. Trying to manifest I also, I mean, again, in receiver. both these mock drafts with McShay and Daniel Jeremiah, it has the Baltimore Ravens addressing the secondary, even though that's still already a strength for them with Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, etc. 
adding safety Trayvon Morig or in, in um, McShay's mock adding J.C. Horn, like I love continuing to throw resources at secondary when value makes sense. I think Morig would be a value here. I think Horn would obviously be a value at 27. I, I really do think buying into that strategy for the Baltimore Ravens would be would be really sweet to see.